Okay, let's take a look at uh, a Madas Maths question within sequences and series. Um, I happen to have chosen what I believe to be a pretty difficult question, but also quite a, a well, can I use that? Well, yeah, quite a cool looking question, right? So it's it uses both arithmetic and geometric series uh, or sequences, and it um, it really does sort of give you plenty of opportunities to do things wrong and to misinterpret the formulas or, or effectively make mistakes. Um, but it is a very interesting question, and I think it's totally possible for you guys to understand it at the very least. So although I expect many of you to not be able to necessarily complete the question immediately, um, hopefully by following through the working you will understand how you can answer a question like this, and it is a really interesting question. So let's take a look at it. Okay, so here's what's going on. We've got an infinite sequence of circles, okay? Not a finite amount, there's an infinite amount of them, but they are decreasing in size in such a way, presumably, such that even though there's an infinite amount of them, they don't ever go past this point O, okay? Which makes sense, right? Because you know that the sum of an infinite sequence can in fact be a finite number. Um, in fact, it's a geometric sequence, right? So, and this is very important. The radius of each smaller circle is some multiple of the larger circle that it's right next to, and that multiple is the same each time. But you're not told what that multiple is. So, um, whatever this radius is, there's some number, which when I multiply that radius, I get this radius. And if I then multiply by that same number again, I'll get this radius and I'll get this radius and so on. Okay, so it's a geometric sequence with regards to the radius, to the one dimensional size, uh, to a one dimensional quantity, I should say, right, which is the radius. Okay, the areas presumably are, are changing a bit differently because area is pi r squared, right, but the radii are decreasing in this sense uh, geometrically. Okay. So then let's see what else we've got here in terms of information. You're told that the largest circle has a radius of four thirds. Okay, so this is four thirds. Uh, and in fact, I'm just gonna give you a little bit of a tip here. Okay, so we don't make this mistake. And I'll be honest, I made this mistake when I first attempted this. That's four thirds. Okay, but then if I wanna connect to this part here, up there, that's not directly above it, right? That is a tangent line which is meeting at somewhat of an angle. In fact, let me just draw that a bit more properly with straight lines. Okay, so you've got the centre of the circle here and then four thirds from A to the centre and four thirds from the centre to B. But A and B are not directly above each other or below each other. Okay, let's label this C in fact because that will be useful later. Right, um, and then what else are we told? Uh, the centre of these circles lie on a straight line, which should look fairly clear, right? So there's a straight line which passes through all the centres. Let's add that line now, in fact, just to help us um, with a little bit with the setup of this question. Okay, makes sense. Look, the green line goes through their centres. And the straight lines OA and B, A, o, A and OB are tangents to every circle in the sequence. Makes sense, that's what it looks like it's going on, they're touching each of the circles. The angle AOB is denoted by 2 theta. Okay, so in other words, the reason they've said 2 theta there is because effectively this angle here between OB and the green line, that's theta. Okay, uh, perhaps not drawn as the best I could, but this blue shaded little, little uh, area the angle of that is theta, okay, and correspondingly theta on the other side. Okay, and then the final bit of information you're told, if I were to take the areas of all these circles and add them all up, these infinite circles, add them all up, I would end up with the answer 2 pi. What's the value of theta? That is a difficult question. However, um, I've given you some setup. Have a think about it first, if you're up for the challenge. And then um, you can start to look at my working out of it, you know, if you do get stuck, which may or may probably happen. Um, but then stop stop me in my working out once you feel you've gotten to a point where you want to sort of tr 
carry on trying it okay um worst case scenario you just have, you end up looking through the working entirely but i'm hoping you can get to a point where you feel like i'm gonna sort of keep giving this a go okay so uh i'll give you an opportunity now to think about it pause the video now okay so let's take a look at this then so we want to find this angle theta you probably can start to spot that there's a triangle here there's a right angle triangle um, which we can start to work with if we want to find this angle theta so we know that this right angle triangle here made up of the three points o c and b it's got one side being four thirds. Okay, that's easy enough. Uh, let's make a note of that in fact. So we know that um, the size of BC is equal to four thirds. Okay. Then the question is which other length could we potentially work out quote unquote easily? It will be this green line, right? Because this green line has a, effectively a meaningful length, doesn't it? This green line is the sum of the diameters of all of the circles, except uh, for the final circle, it's just the radius, right? It's just this little section here. So it's add up the sum of all of the diameters, or twice the radii, plus the final radius. Uh, we can express that with some notation, in fact. And this is one of those much harder questions where you need to start to introduce some notation, at least. Let's use the following notation. Let's say uh, capital Ri, and perhaps you've got your own notation, uh, is equal to the radius of the ith circle. Okay. And let's say, for instance, let's this could be, say, the i equals 1 circle. This is the i equals 2 circle. i equals 3 and so on. Okay, so then that way, if I want to refer to, say, for example, the radius of this circle, I can just say capital R subscript 2. Okay, so now let's write an expression for the green line using this notation. The green line OC is equal to the sum from I equals uh, let's do this correctly. Mm, let me just think. Yeah, from two. Mm, no, no. Let's make this. Let's do it an easy way of doing this. Okay, from one to infinity of two times each radius. So that's the diameter. Uh, but then we're going to have to do minus um, r one to compensate for the fact that. I've added two of these radiuses, or radii, and uh, I only really need to add one of them. So I'm gonna take away R1. So I'll end up with R1 plus two R2 plus two R3 plus two R4 all the way up to infinity, okay? Hopefully that makes sense. That's a legitimate expression for the length of OC. It's some finite number, we don't know what it is yet. And this is BC is four thirds. Then uh, the angle theta, well, that's just gonna be um, if we see here, this is the opposite to the angle, and that's the hypotenuse, so we can use sine. So we've got sine of theta is equal to um, opposite, which is the size of BC, all over the size of OC. Okay? Right, so we're starting to make some progress here. If we can find this value OC, we'll be done, right? Because BC is four thirds, and then we just take sine inverse. Um, so at this stage, if you feel like you want to, you know, keep cracking on with the question, feel free. You can pause the video now. Otherwise, um, let's see how we're going to end up getting uh, the sum of all these radii. Okay, so the way we're going to do this is we need to start thinking about, well, what actually is this multiplier? How much are these radii increasing or decreasing by as I go from one circle to the next? And in order to do that, we're going to have to make use of a bit of information we've been given. The total area of these circles is 2 pi. Now, surely that information must, in some way, indirectly, be telling us 
what the ratio is between the circles, right? Because if I change the ratio, then the circles will be getting bigger or smaller. However, the first circle is always the same size because we know it's radius 4 thirds. So therefore, for it to be exactly 2 pi, there must be a specific ratio which gives us that value. So now let's find out what that is. So let me define, let's say little r equals, okay? Now be very careful, this little r is not a radius. It's a, it, this little r stands for ratio. It's, but it's the ratio of um, any two neighboring radii. So the little r is equal to the ratio between, uh, uh, let's say the ratio of uh, radii for two neighboring circles. Okay. Um, so specifically, if I multiply um, R0, R1 by little r, I should get R2 and so on. So Let's just make that a bit more mathematically uh, correct, i.e. Um, r of n plus 1. So the radius of the n plus 1 circle will be equal to little r times the radius of the nth circle. Okay. So this little r then must be some value between 0 and 1, right? Because these circles are getting smaller, not bigger. So it must be less than 1. Okay. So now let's come up with an expression for the total area of all the circles. So what's the area of the biggest circle? This one here. Let's, uh, let's write it underneath, actually. So we've got uh, pi r squared, right? So it's going to be pi times 4 thirds squared. Then what about this one here? We're going to have pi times, now what's its radius? Well, its radius is going to be 4 thirds times that little r, whatever that ratio is, and then squared. And then here we've got pi times 4 thirds times that little r, but this time squared because we multiplied it again, and then all of that is squared. And then let's just do one more. Here we've got pi times 4 thirds r cubed, and it's all squared. Okay, so the radius is always being squared, but that radius is being multiplied by r each time. So as a formal expression, um, the total area is going to be the sum from, um, in this case, i equals 0 to infinity. Um, let me just make sure I do the correct indices here. Yeah, that makes sense. Uh, pi uh, times 4 thirds little r to the power of this i all squared. Okay. So just to double check this makes sense, when I put in i as 0, I end up with 4 thirds in these brackets. So that's therefore this one. When I put i as 1, I get 4 thirds r. So that's this one. When I put i as 2, I get 4 thirds r squared, all squared. That's this one. i is 3, I get this one. So that makes sense. This, this summation expression corresponds precisely to summing up the areas of all of these infinite circles, and it's in going up to infinity. Okay, let's make this then look a little bit uh, more palatable. So if we square that expression, so we sort of square it out. I'm going to get 4 thirds squared. And then I'm going to change this to r squared to the power of i. Okay, that, that works fine, right? Because r to the power of i squared is r to the 2i, which is the same as r squared to the power of i. And effectively, I'm flipping the powers, which is totally uh, legit. So now we've got something with this variable i here, but this part here, pi 4, 4 third squared, that's all a constant. So that's equal to, let's take that constant out, 16 over 9 pi times the sum from i equals 0 to infinity of r squared to the i. Okay, and now I'm just going to lose some of this working. 
and bring forward what we've got here. Okay, that's our total area. You might prefer to just see this written out again as a sequence, just to help you see what we're actually looking at here. So this is 16 over 9 pi times 1, because that's what happens when i is 0, I get 1, plus r squared, plus r squared squared, plus r squared cubed, plus r squared to the 4, plus dot dot dot. Okay, and now think about, you know, this sequence is actually quite simple to sum to infinity. Remember, if you've got 1 plus x plus x squared plus x cubed plus x to the 4 and so on, the sum to infinity of that is 1 over 1 minus x. I've only used x there instead of r, just to not confuse you with the r that we're dealing with here, right? So let me just write that uh, again. Let's write it here, actually. So um, this is effectively taking a geometric series of a common ratio x. Okay, so this is a little aside. If I add up a sequence of terms where I'm multiplying by the same thing each time, okay, the sum to infinity of that is 1 over 1 minus x. Okay, you might be more familiar with seeing the expression a plus ar plus ar squared plus ar cubed plus dot 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 equals a all over 1 minus r. Okay, this is the same thing, but it's a special case where the first term is 1. So because the first term is 1, that's why we've got a 1 up here. And then instead of using r, I've used x to not confuse us with this r that we're using down here. Okay, so therefore here that matches this sequence precisely except instead of an x we've got an r squared so then the sum instead of an x will have an r squared so effectively all of this is 1 all over 1 minus r squared okay um, so now let me just neaten that up a little bit We've therefore got 16 over pi, 16 over 9 pi, sorry, um, times this 1 over 1 minus r squared. Uh, in fact, let me just write it afresh here. Okay, so the total area is 16 over 9 times pi times 1 all over 1 minus r squared. Okay. And what is this equal to? Well, we've been told that this must be equal to 2 pi in the question. The total area of all the circles is 2 pi. So those pi's are going to cancel. Uh, in fact, you should be able to manipulate that yourselves to say that 1 minus r squared is equal to 8 over 9. Okay, just a little bit of basic algebra there, manipulating this. 1 minus r squared equals 8 over 9, and therefore r squared is equal to a ninth, and therefore little r is equal to a third. Okay, and that's really useful. That, that value there, r equals a third, is telling us by how much these circles are decreasing. It's saying, right, if this has a radius 4 thirds, this circle, then this circle here has a radius of 4 thirds times a third. And this one has a radius of 4 thirds times a third squared. This one has a radius of 4 thirds times a third cubed, and so on. Okay, So the geometric sequence of the radii has a, a, a ratio of 1 third. Okay? And we determine that by using the information about the total area. Okay, great. Okay, so now... Um, we're, we're getting closer. We're now going to use this ratio to help us figure out what this thing is. The sum of all the radii. So this green line. So we're going to have to form a new geometric sequence. So let's, uh, let's get rid of you know, a bunch of this working. You, you know what RI, capital RI refers to now. I don't need to keep that there. And let's keep a note here that little r is equal to a third. And now let's write an expression for
for a general radius. So that's going to be 4 thirds times um, r and then let's get the index correct. If I said to the i then when I have 1 that wouldn't be quite right so let's say i minus 1. Okay now it makes sense. So when i is 1 I've got the radius of the first circle and here I get 4 thirds when i is 1 because r to the 1 minus 1 gives me uh, 1 here and therefore I get 4 thirds. When r is 2 I get 4 thirds r. When r is 3, I get 4 thirds r squared. Okay, that all lines up with you know our original definition here. So therefore, um, this expression, let's see what that looks like. In fact, I'm just going to write it out uh, and then use dot, dot, dot at the end because I think that means we don't get too bogged down in notation. So the sum from i equals 1 to infinity of these diameters, these 2 times the radii, that's going to be equal to the following. Um, 2 times 4 thirds plus 2 times 4 thirds times a third plus 2 times 4 thirds times a third squared. Um, let's do one more. And dot, dot, dot. And so on all the way up to infinity. Okay. So here we've got another geometric sequence, don't we? And in this case, what we can do is we can just take um, 8 thirds on the outside and then sum up what we have here, which is 1 plus a third plus a third squared plus a third cubed up to infinity. Okay. And... Well, we know exactly how to sum a, a sequence like that, right? It's again, it's in the form of the um, 1 plus x plus x squared and, and so on. Um, so let's move that up here. Oh, and substitute in, instead of that long sequence, let's just put what that would actually be. So that's going to be 8 thirds times 1 all over 1 minus the common ratio, which is a third. So that's equal to um, 8 thirds times 1 all over 2 thirds, which is 3 over 2. And therefore, 8 thirds times 3 over 2, that's just equal to 4. OK, so what that's told us is, let's not lose sight of what that 4 represents. That represents this part in the brackets, the 4, which is the length of the green line, but then also including this extra little bit here. So we need to take away that little part, which is this R1. We know that's 4 thirds, right? Um, this part, that's also 4 thirds that I've just drawn in blue. So therefore, the green line, OC, um, is just going to be 4 minus those 4 thirds. So let's make a note of that here. That's equal to 4, which we just calculated as the sum of that sequence, minus 4 thirds. And that gives me, um, let's see, 16 over, if I remember that correctly, 4 minus 4 thirds. Yeah, that should be right, 8 thirds. OK, great. So uh, let me get rid of working again. So now we're at this point, we're almost there. Sine theta equals uh, BC over OC. BC we know is 4 thirds, we knew that at the very beginning. And OC we've now just worked out. It's 8 thirds. Therefore this is equal to 4 over 8, it's a half. Um, and no calculator required. Sine theta equals a half. That's come out nicely. That implies theta equals 30 degrees. Or at this level of question, you'd probably be talking about radians pi over 6.
radians. Okay, hopefully that made sense. Um, I think it's a really, it's quite a beautiful question really. Um, and it, it really just goes to show the sort of interesting properties that you can have with infinite sequences. Um, and quite a bit of work involved to, to be able to get that answer. Well done if you did manage to complete it by yourself or at least most of it by yourself. Otherwise, do make sure you've uh, had a chance to sort of follow through and understand what happens. But that's it. We've got the angle there. It's 30 degrees.